Here we are at the ribbed stitch section. Again, I think this is one you can handle on your own without a specific demonstration from me. You'll notice that it is the same instruction you were given for rows one through six of the basket weave section, but there's no other row. You just do that row one through six over and over and over again until the section measures six inches. Now, the um, this ribbed stitch section is only going to happen once on the scarf. All the other ones you're going to do twice because after you finish the rib stitch section, you're going to go backwards down the pattern back to the garter stitch section for the second half of the scarf. But the rib stitch section is just in the center, what would go across the back of your neck as you're wearing the scarf. And so you could very well make it longer than six inches if you wanted. This Here's what it looks like. It is um, alternating uh, columns of four knits and four purls. It will look the same on the front and the back. It is also probably, since it's in the halfway point, where you are going to need to change yarn. You're going to run out of yarn at some point and need to join the yarn from a second ball. And this it couldn't be easier, but it, it always sounds to people like it, it's an impossible thing or it must be dangerous or hard, but it really isn't. I'll give you a little, um, a little, a couple tricks, uh, tips for it. First of all, you cannot work another row of knitting if you don't have about three or four times the length of yarn um, for the width of your scarf. So this, this is this will go over and back once and then a little. That's not enough yarn to work a whole row. So I know that now is the time to change the yarn. This is also a good length for a tail. At the very end of the project, you're going to need to weave in your tails and you want them to be, I'd say six to eight inches long. That will make the job easier. And the best way to join new yarn when you have a border running along the edge like we do. We have these uh, three knit stitches running along each edge. So the best thing to do is knit those three stitches with the yarn you have been using. And now you are on the inside of the border. And this is, this is a good invisible place to change your yarn. If you were to change it right on the very edge, it's hard to, to make it look neat. Um, it'll be noticeable there. But here, it will be very invisible. And what we need is more yarn. So here's my, my next ball of yarn. You want to make sure to leave another 6 to 8 inch long tail because you're going to have to weave this one in too. Your first step, this is a knit stitch here after those three border stitches. Insert your needle as if to knit. Now take the yarn that you're going to join, leave yourself a little tail, and fold the yarn at that point, and just snag the, uh, the yarn with your needle. Just drop that folded yarn right over the top of your right hand knitting needle and pull the loop through to the front and then slide the old stitch off the needle. And now get ready to work your next stitch. Insert your right hand needle. This time, you're not going to use both of those strands. You need to be aware of which one is your tail and don't use that one. Use the one that's attached to your ball of yarn. Wrap around your needle as if uh, for knitting because you are knitting and pull that through. And now you're working with the new ball of yarn and you just keep going along as if nothing happened. Um, start to purl when you need to purl, and, and that's it. You've changed yarns. Now, when you come back to this uh, area where you joined the new yarn the next time, it's going to be quite loose because these stitches are not properly attached. Don't worry about that. If things get kind of loose, just pull on these tails. That'll tighten up the stitch and just work them like normal. By the time you hit them again, they'll probably feel pretty normal. Uh, and these tails will take care of at the very end. Something else I wanted to point out that's um, uh, 
nice about this section is we were talking about reading your knitting in terms of the seed stitch when you had the alternating knits and purls. When you have something like this where the knits are stacked on top of each other and the purls are stacked on top of each other, it's even easier to read your knitting. You don't just have to rely on the stitch that's right under your needle. You can kind of glance down the fabric to help you stay on track. So this this should be a real easy section for you to do, for you to look at what's presented in the fabric and on the needle and do the right thing. In this case, unlike with the seed stitch, when you see a knit, you're going to make a knit, and when you see a purl, you're going to make a purl. And that will give you this uh, ribbing.